interfering with a flight crew, and that faces up to 20 years in prison. I don't think that we have any laws against mooning, but if you're on a flight and somebody does that, come on, that's just, that's just not okay. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk with ABC's Jim Ryan. Synagogues around the U.S. this weekend held the first Sabbath since the January 15th hostage takeover at that synagogue in Texas. Man, I don't know if you heard some of the comments that came out of the services. They were hard acts of defiance against other acts of anti-Semitism. It was just, it was amazing stuff. It was amazing solidarity, amazing strength, and, uh, you know, just a, a show of, we're not going to take this anymore. So we'll talk with Jim about that in just a few minutes. Right now, though, let's take a look at that drive on the 105. As you make your way westbound uh, near Crenshaw Boulevard through Hawthorne and Inglewood, if the crash has been cleared to the right shoulder, although an overturned car involved here, so it is definitely an attention getter for you. Back up the drive for you, westbound 105 as you come away from the 110. Also, ongoing problems for you in mid city LA, heading towards downtown, eastbound side of the 10, Santa Monica Freeway at Vermont. If the crash is the two right lanes shut down, that's back up the drive for you as you come away from western. Looky Lou delays on the westbound side of the 10, coming out of downtown as you leave the 110. And also, starting to get busy for you on a in East LA on the 5 North Route, leaving the 710 to the 101. KFI in the sky helps get to their faster. I'm Nick Pagliotini. Let's see here. Good times for mac and cheese. With a wool burger in there. The yellow for a steak. Gotta grab a boba from Mohan. Keep coffee for dessert. Yep, that settles it. Can't start my diet until 2023. And now, the top five reasons to visit Morocco. Number five. Big Game Blitz. Watch the big game on big screens in the ballroom. Food, drinks, and giveaways included. Get tickets now. Number four. Celebrate the Lunar New Year with us. Book your room now before we sell out at MoroccoCasinoResort.com. Three. Genuine. Right February 4th. Get your tickets today. And the number two. Big Game Blow Up. Where every touchdown, fumble, field goal, shot, or any touchdown of a worst man will win up to $1,000 cash. And the number one. Morongo Casino Resort and Spa. Morongo, good times! SoCal weather from KFI. We've got a mostly sunny day ahead. I don't see any big winds in the forecast, so that's the good news. Temperatures today, though, will be in the mid-60s to the low 70s, and we'll drop back into the upper 40s overnight. We lead local, live from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. I'm Jennifer Jones-Lee. Hey, everyone loves the thought of a fresh start. Well, if you're sick of struggling financially or you got some bad debt dragging you down, Oak Tree Law can help. There's a healthcare worker in Murrieta had $99,000 in credit card debt and wages were being garnished. Oak Tree Law was able to erase 100% of the debt and remove the wage garnishment entirely. Here's another one. A father in Pasadena fell $48,000 behind on his mortgage. The bank issued a sale date on his home. Oak Tree Law stepped in and immediately stopped the sale date and got a modification with a lower interest and payment. A restaurant owner from West Covina had a $250,000 lien placed on his house. Oak Tree Law was able to get the lien stripped off the property and eliminate $486,000 in credit card and business debt. Real stories, real people. So no matter your situation, no matter what kind of debt you have, if you need help and you're tired of stressing, call Oak Tree Law right now. Call 800-542-2949. 800-542-2949. Start 2022 with a clean slate. Call 800-542-2949. 800-542-2949. Refinance your home today. Apply with HMS Capital and any other lender. Let HMS Capital win your business. Visit HMSCapital.com. HMS Capital Funding is a DBA Golden Empire Inc. MLS ID 247. HMS Capital is licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Lending Act. License number 410360. People helping lenders. Hey all, it's Dean Sharp. Are you looking to sell your home in 2022? Well, congratulations. That is a big deal. For most of us, it's the biggest deal of all. So let's make sure you get everything out of it that you can, yeah? Before you get ready to list, make sure you call the good folks at Revive. Revive's business is to maximize your home's sale value. How? By guiding you through market-critical upgrades before you sell. It's like flipping your own home, except Revive fronts the cost and guarantees results. Yeah, you heard that right. No money out of pocket and a higher selling price guaranteed. You can list higher and sell faster in just a few short weeks. In fact, the average homeowner sees 160 k in additional profit. This is a no-brainer. Revive has created an easy, stress-free way to maximize your greatest asset, your home. 
So, are you thinking about selling? Then before you do anything, chat with an advisor at Revive. To get started, go to iloverevive.com. That's iloverevive.com. Speaking of great weekends, the Rams had an awesome weekend. Took a step closer to the Super Bowl. Matt Gay made a 30-yard kick with seconds to go in the game against the Bucks yesterday. Did anybody else watch Tom Brady's face? I, okay, sorry, just asking. Al Michaels called the game for NBC and said that the Rams beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 30-27. They now head to the NFC championship, uh, championship game. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> Against the Niners. Oh, it's a shame the Niners even have to come, Jim Ryan. Well, yeah. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, my team. Talk about shame. Oh, boy, man. Oh boy. That's all right. I, you know, I married a Falcons fan. You talk mm. about shame. Woo. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> all right, Jim, good morning. So let's talk about now synagogues around the U.S. Uh, had their first Sabbath since the January 15th hostage taking in, at, at, in a synagogue in Texas. Mm. And, man, I was just... Uh, it was almost striking the, uh, the sense of defiance from them, and we will not, you know, tolerate these acts of anti-Semitism. Honestly, there was something very beautiful about the way they dug their heels in. Yeah, exactly, and, and took a stand against what a lot of the leaders in the Jewish community see as an increase in anti-Semitic activities and, and comments and vandalism and all-out aggression of the sort that we saw in the synagogue here in Colleyville, Texas last week. And so, yes, I, I suspect that if anyone's keeping count of the numbers of people showing up at uh, at uh, Sabbath uh, this weekend, that the Shabbat services was considerably higher than it usually is. And at the Colleyville uh, service, at the Colleyville synagogue that was the site of that hostage taking a week ago, the services were held not at the congregation itself, not at that synagogue, because it's still an FBI crime scene, but they met elsewhere and streamed the service again. And yes, Rabbi Charlie Citron Walker, one of the hostages, was there. He led the service and talked about healing, talked about the community, and about moving forward, having learned something from what happened to him and the others inside the synagogue last week. And I think what's interesting, you and I have talked about this previously, how we saw a fewer people going to church and going to synagogue and that sort of thing. And it's kind of incredible that it takes something like this to get people to say, you know what, never mind, we are going back. And for most people, they were saying that because of COVID, but even COVID can't fight the human spirit in some cases. No, you're right. And I think a lot of people uh, overcame some misgivings about getting out again, maybe uh, attending services in person as opposed to online. Among those who attended the service at the uh, Congregation Beth Israel in Colleyville was uh, Ruth Salton, 100 years old. It was the eve of her 100th birthday. She is a Holocaust survivor. She said there was no way that she was going to miss the service uh, on Saturday uh, you know, to stand there with Rabbi Sitron Walker in solidarity against what she says has been, for her, a lifetime of anti-Semitism. And I'm sure that you know what, I bet it's sad for her, and just kind of thinking about it from her perspective, a lifetime of anti-Semitism that she probably thought at some point would be gone. She probably thought, next year, in the next decade, I won't see this anymore. How sad that it remains. It does, yes. And, and again, some people say that it's increasing in the last few years. That they, these sorts of acts of violence or acts of vandalism are only on the rise. That's why you see things like the, the um, Secure Community Network, which goes around to synagogues around the country doing training sessions. In fact, uh, ra um, the, the congregation Beth Israel in Colleyville that had one of these training sessions just a few months ago. Rabbi Sitron Walker was there, says he learned from that, learned some valuable lessons, and, and that helped him to be prepared to act when the opportunity came. Eleven hours into the standoff, he saw that the gunman that uh, the, the uh, that Dockram was distracted for a second. He still had his gun, but he was holding a glass of juice and was taking a drink, and that's when Citron Walker threw a chair at him. And he and the two remaining hostages managed to bolt out the back door 
with the hostage taker right behind them. Uh, but uh, yeah, they, they made it out safely, they made it out okay. We now know, by the way, Chad, that it was a SWAT team member who fired the shot that killed the gunman. It was not uh, an act of um, suicide, but Malik Faisal Akram died at the hands of an FBI agent. They still don't know, by the way, how he got the gun that he took into that synagogue. Wasn't it a rumor that he got it possibly at like a homeless shelter where he was staying? That's still the rumor. We know that he stayed at several shelters here in the Dallas area uh, in the days leading up to the incident. He had come here from uh, his uh, home country of Britain. And so he flew internationally, obviously didn't have a gun on the flight, but somehow he got a hold of a gun and apparently some explosives as well once he was on the ground here in Texas. They're still trying to figure out what happened there, how, how he got his hands on those things. What was security like at the synagogue yesterday? Was it massive? I mean, was you know, did they have more security there than normal for fear of any other, you know, sort of habitat or retaliatory attack? Well, police departments around the country, including in Collegeville, have stepped up security and, and the patrols around synagogues, and by the way, around mosques and churches. Uh, temples, you know, they, they've begun to watch those places a little more carefully. If there was specific mm. security in place at the Congregation Beth Israel, you really couldn't see it. It was, uh, it was hidden. Uh, the Secure Community Network has offered to provide security services to Jewish communities around the country. And again, it wasn't the Saturday service wasn't held at the synagogue, but at a location not too far from that. All right, Jim, thank you for the update right. on that. Have a great day. Thanks, Jim. See you later. ABC's Jim Ryan. All right, well, you know, and sometimes I think that is true. I think that sometimes your fear, say, of COVID is mitigated when you get that fire in your belly. You know what I'm talking about. Where you just know something is so wrong that you have to stand up for it at whatever cost. And I kind of feel like that's what the response was with this show that we saw at synagogue this weekend all right super sad story about a man in orange county you just your heart breaks for this guy he's pleading for the public's help after finding his beloved dog was allegedly stolen by his pet groomer so the guy's name is Kian Vahidi sorry I probably butchered your name he went to pick up his five-year-old Maltese Furley from Paradise Grooming in Yorba Linda. He was told when he went to pick up the dog by an employee who only worked at the business for a couple of days that the dog was stolen by this employee who just worked there for a couple of days. The employee was said to have taken the dog and never returned. The Heaney and his family blame the business. They say that the shop apparently didn't check the employee's background information or verify anything. And Vahidi's offering, though, a $5,000 reward. He says no questions asked. He calls his dog the light of his life, and anyone with information is asked to contact the Orange County Sheriff's Department. So if all of a sudden you have a friend who just has a Maltese, a Maltese, you might have a fish on here, friend. What we got going on there? Lakers fans, we don't have a deal for you. Basketball Hall of Famer Kareem Abdul, he scored, wouldn't well, say a whole lot of points in a game, but he's expecting a whole lot of money for the basketball score, the basketball that made the record. So the final score, the final points that were scored by Kareem Abdul Jabbar, with that history in mind, he signed the game basketball. The last regular season, 489, along with his final career point total, right? Now, for 33 years, that particular ball has been going in and out of hands of some of the most infamous memorabilia collectors. But now, it's going up on the auction block again. But here's the deal. The last time it went up on the auction block, it went up for $270,000. Now, a lot of people are saying that's not much if you think about some of the other, you know, what, Tom Brady. He had a, I think he had a uh, jersey that went up for five to six hundred thousand. They believe that estimated at eight hundred thousand to a million dollars. So know that other things have gone up for that, but it's one basketball. Two hundred seventy thousand dollars is going to be in Las Vegas. The auction is March twenty fifth through the twenty seventh. So yes, you're a big fan. There's your opportunity. Yes. 
on this one. Okay, we talked about different schools that get rid of certain codes of access or they change their codes of access because they feel that words in the code might be uh, discriminatory or they may be disrespectful or something like that. Well, the University of Washington is the latest to come out with a language guide that is calling everyday words used by Americans problematic. The University of Washington Information Technology Department released this inclusive language guide that lists a number of what it calls problematic words that are racist, sexist, ageist, or homophobic. Some of these words are ones that you might have used this morning. Some of these words are probably ones that you used in sentences last night. For example, words like grandfather, housekeeping, minority, ninja, and lame are all considered problematic words. Why you ask? Lame is considered problematic because it's ableist. They say the word is offensive, even when it's used in slang for uncool, because it's using a disability in a negative way to imply that the opposite, which would not be to be not lame, to be superior. Now, what about minority? Okay, well, minority implies a less than attitude toward a certain community. So when minority is used to refer to other races or abilities, like a generalized term for the other, it implies a less than attitude to, for the community you're talking about. Here's the one that... Grandfather. The guide considers grandfather a problematic word because the term was used as a way to exempt some people from a change because of conditions that existed before the change. Huh? Grandfather Claus. That's what they were talking about. Originated in the America South in the 1890s as a way to defy the 15th Amendment and prevent black, and black Americans from voting. So what, you, so what do you call grandfather? Now you're grandfather in It's the grandfather clause. It's the old clause. It's the old school way of doing things. And, and you have to, well, we have to see grandfather all together. So you have your grandmother and that guy she's married to. Like, housekeeping. Housekeeping. Because it says that if you use the word housekeeping, it can feel gendered. Housekeeping. You did not hear me say a female housekeeper, male housekeeper, housekeeper X. I heard said nothing. But phrases with man, such as manpower, man hours, man in the middle, is considered non-inclusive and thus sexist. But how is housekeeping considered gender? I, language such as no can do, spirit animal, and separating groups based on certain colors as racist or culturally inappropriative. So they say you can't use preferred pronouns because those can become problematic because the term preferred suggests that a person's pronoun is optional. And according to the language guide, using red, white, or yellow to separate different teams is based on racist tropes. Using colors like white as good, black as bad, red as attackers, or yellow as third party is, is offensive. And using spirit animal is problematic because it uses cultural appropriation. I don't, I don't make it up. I just read it. And I'm still stuck on the headphones. Do I have my sister on grandpa now? You know, that's what I do, but... So it was Grandpa Bill and Grandpa Floyd. So, and, and now every time I refer to them as my grandfather, I was, I was wrong. Yay, hmm. where are we in this world? Right, we're going to come back. I know where I'm wrong. We're going to talk to a day bike this morning. And SpaceX cargo dragon ship is back on its way to Earth. I'll tell you what it's carrying. There's a trucking company that has made a major increase in wages. Also, I've got a couple of airline stories for you, including what happens to airlines when the corporate traveler goes away.
Could Southwest possibly uh, be getting rid of this cattle call way of getting gone. you on board? And the latest trendy face mask, and I will just warn you right now, I don't mean a face mask like, oh, a cloth versus a mask, you know, to prevent COVID kind of face mask. I mean a face mask that's supposed to make your skin better, but all I ever used it for was on white bread with Miracle Whip and a piece of cheese. Nick Pagliocchini, I don't think that anything I put on white bread with Miracle Whip and a piece of cheese should probably go on my face. No, although we do use frozen meat in case you get a black eye, so maybe not too far off. Okay, that's a good point. I just use egg, like the egg yolk as a kid, yeah. and put it on my acne, because yeah. I heard that that was supposed to dress. I don't know if it ever worked. But I, I, I use toothpaste for feet. it, so no, I use toothpaste for that specific yes. activity, so I feel you. Okay. I go with the old wives' tales, all right. Yeah. This says not to drive down and sitting in the next in the SUV, San Gabriel Valley. What's on site of the 10 right around Vincent? It is a crash involving the big rig. There are two right lanes are definitely shut down, although, according to CHP, it may be all lanes being held for the moment. So you're seeing a rough go on the west side of the 10 from as far back as Via Verde. KFI and the Sky helps get you there faster. I'm Nicole O'Keefe. This report is sponsored by Discover. Real credit card questions require real people. Someone who understands your issues and works to resolve them with you. That's why Discover offers helpful U.S.-based representatives. Available 24-7. Discover. Exceptionally common sense. The Rams did throw to the city. They avoided a late game pass to beat the Buccaneers in the divisional round. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are heading to their fourth straight AFC Championship game. Kansas the city survived the Bills in an overtime thriller. In a late round, it fell short as the Lakers lost to the Heat. LeBron James scored a game high 33 points for LA, who dropped five of their last seven yards. I'm Missy Jordan. Need new hires in the new year? You need CD to help you find your next hire. When you sponsor a post, you get a list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash credits. Hey guys, Conway here. The only thing we need to do is make a new and instantly forgetting about it is donating your old vehicle or to our old kids. The entire process takes about two minutes with a quick call to 1877-CARS-FOR-KIDS or visit carsforkids.org. They guarantee quick, free pickup in your car, and they'll take care of all the paperwork so you don't have to. Plus, you're going to get a tax deduction and a voucher for a three-day, two-night hotel stay. Get going with that hotel stay. To get started, just go to carsforkids.org. That's Cars. With a K. This is hard to admit, but when I was in junior high school, I was bullied so badly, I cried. Hello, I'm John McQuan, owner of Ruder Hero Plumbing. I was named Ogamet after my grandfather, but as a kid, I was teased for having that name. So I changed it to John. John is the English version of Ogamet, and it maintains the honor to my grandfather. My family and heritage are important to me. So staying true to myself and Ruder Hero Plumbing are important. Staying true to Ruder Hero Plumbing means being true to you and delivering world-class service. That's why my cell phone number is on the back of every Ruder Hero Plumbing business card. Call us at 866-377 and we'll cable your line for $77. That's 866-377. Thank you. Hey, it's Jerry and Shannon. Super excited about the Super Bowl and the Super Bowl experience presented by Lowe's. NFL's interactive football theme park comes to L.A. for Super Bowl 56 starting Saturday, February 5th at the L.A. Convention Center. Get tickets to Ticketmaster or NFL.com slash SBX on sale or by downloading the NFL One Pass in the app store. Stay good. Everybody, get ready. For our 2022 Pioneer Radio Music Awards. Celebrating the biggest artists of the year. It's about the music. Hey, hey. Hey. All sorts of styles honoring the musicians you love. Know. We're starting to box on March 22nd. Oh my god. Every day I'm like almost in tears. I have a radio music award. And here as the nominees are announced. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the nominees. Thursday morning at 6. Portions of the following program will be recorded. Where are they going to go with this lawsuit? Stupid stuff. Think any lawyer is going to do this other than being paid $500 an hour? Well, you mean, would somebody take it pro bono because they really believe in the strength of the case? Maybe. There are crazy lawyers out there, too. You know, I can't think of a single lawyer that I know who's crazy, Bill. I wouldn't take this case. Bill Handel. I'm not that crazy. Morning from 6 to 10 on KFI. Monday, Monday. 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 Monday.
Victoria Lab everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Welcome to a Monday morning. I'm Jennifer Jones Lee. Some of the stories we're watching in the KFI 24 hour newsroom. The founder of WikiLeaks has won a court decision in his battle to avoid extradition to the U.S. A high court in the UK says Julian Assange can appeal its decision that he be sent to the U.S. to stand trial on espionage charges. Also, CNN is reporting a lone gunman has injured several people in a shooting in an auditorium at the University of Heidelberg in southwest Germany this morning. I'll get you more information on that as soon as I can get it. And the LA school district says students are no longer allowed to wear cloth masks. School officials say students must wear a well-fitted non-cloth non mask with a nose wire. The masks will be available to students upon request. All right, now let's get into your biz bite this morning. Let's start with some news about airlines. First off, there's some bad news out there if you look at corporate flyers. Because airlines historically have received about 70% of their revenue because of corporate flying. And as the pandemic hit, the number of travelers started to drop, including the corporate ones. By how much? 96%. There's a research firm, Castle, that developed what it calls a weekly occupancy report that looks at the number of people who swipe their IDs to get into work, right? Well, the most recent report shows that you've got a, a, a fewer people swiping to get into work. Why? Because they're staying home. If they're staying home, they're not going into work. They're probably not doing nearly as much corporate traveling. And hardly doing any traveling at all. The occupancy rate for the people who swipe their cards is just 25.6% according to the report. And that just reflects the behavior and the changes of corporate America. Now, the CEO of all these big companies, the CEO of Delta, he had predicted last year that corporate travel would be back and actually exceed the previous numbers. But unfortunately, that plan did not Bang. go off as well. Really, the only people who have been returning is the leisure traveler, and since some airlines get a much smaller profit from us, you got to wonder where this loss of revenue is going to come from. Do those prices go up? Do we see ticket prices go up? The cost has to be made up somewhere. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Well, if you go to Southwest, if you fly on Southwest, you know two major staples of Southwest. Bags fly free and open season. Get any way you want, right? Well, a recent announcement by Southwest indicated that their policy on open seating might be replaced by assigned seating. When the airline started 50 years ago, they said the policy was simple. Arrive early and you get your pick of seats. You arrive late, jeopardize an on-time departure, and you get what's left over. But if Southwest is serious about dumping...